Bats make pretty cool sounds, but they are in danger of dying out. Now listen to this. It is just the worst sound. That is why you want the bats. They eat mosquitoes. Truth is, the bats are in trouble and they need our help. If I can get the YouTube community to share this message and help the bats before it's too late, it'll be a dream come true. If you want to skip the video, okay, but please listen to the end chapter. What are bats for or help the bats? It is all I ask. I will pour a lot of information into you, so stay sharp if you want to learn. I'm Martin and I'm gonna save some bats. Just like you and me, bats need the three basic things. Warmth, sleep and food. I already know there are bats around here. I saw them last summer and one hid themselves outside one of our windows. A cute little thing. The bat box will provide them with warmth as they huddle up and sleep. The warmth will also help their digestion and the offspring will grow faster. A bat feels safe in a cramped up space. For food, there are lots of insects and mosquitoes around during spring to autumn here in Norway. The bats around the world are an endangered species, so let's give them a helping hand by giving them a home. Do not use impregnated wood for this build or any birdhouse as the fumes from the lumber will be released in warm days. Bats are very sensitive to smell and will be deterred by any treatments applied. Personally, I don't like paint either, and that leaves me often burning the wood or using my tar-based Norwegian base for the outside. It smells quite good, and do let the wood be natural on the inside. Here I have drawn a sketch with measurements so you can just copy it. I will post this sketch on my WoodTube group on Facebook. The bat box will have twin vertical chambers with ladder style grooves. This allows the bat to climb into the preferred chamber. I leave a ditch of 2 cm in between the chambers and that leaves enough space for the smaller bats of my area. Bats like the vertical to be minimum 40 cm or as you Americanos say it, 1 foot 4 inches. The width as I have understood it is not as important. I will keep mine at around 20 centimeters and that is 8 inches because that's the plank I have. This design I found on Pinterest. I chose it so that everyone that comes near this thing don't have to ask what is that box for. It should be pretty obvious and they shouldn't be disturbing the bats by closing in on it. Yeah, the bats are the only mammal to fly actively using their own muscle strength. They are nocturnal animals and orient themselves by calling out and listening for echoes. Bats are generally shy and do not attack or show aggression unless they are handled or feel threatened. They have a uh, life expectancy of about 40 years and most bats they hunt insects and smaller arthropods. So there's nothing wrong with a good bat. The missing bottom of the bat box means that bat droppings will fall to the ground and you don't have to clean it. Bat droppings make a really good fertilizer, so you might want to put a tray or something under and spread the good news in your vegetable garden. Bats eat around uh, 1000 to 3000 insects a night and a box like this might fit uh, 40 to 50 bats and that makes life as an insect here a short-lived one. If you have bats in your house, it is a great idea to put up a good box outside because they prefer a crampy place to a big attic. An open flight path to the box is important. It should be sighted high up between 2.5 meters and 5 meters on a building or a mature tree. For warm regions, the ideal aspect 
is so the box receives only part sun during the day, north, southwest, or southeast. In Norway, we hang them facing south and high up for maximum sun. If it is on an existing feeding or flight route, you are more likely to get occupants. Bats prefer to live close to their food, so it is easiest to get bats if you live close to a lake, a swamp, or ponds with lots of bugs. Having a flowery garden helps a lot too. In Norway, the bats start to get active in April, so I will put my box up in the beginning of March, just to be on the safe side. They will normally use the box until September. Bats work as a pest control eating various insects. Some also disperse seeds from fruit and trees, so they help nature. Their guano is supposedly the best fertilizer around, and they are one of the most misunderstood animals. Bats are in fact vital to the health of our environment and economy. Recent studies estimate that bats eat enough pests to save more than 3 billion per year in crop damage and pesticide cost in the United States alone. The method of fastening the box will vary from place to place. Here we have no problems with drought or any serious illness for the trees, so I prefer to use a rust-free screw. Other options are a rope with a stick between the tree and the box, or lashing straps, or a galvanized nail. Now listen carefully if you want to do your part in helping the bat's survival. There are many ways to get involved. You can spread the word and share what you learned about the importance of bats. You can watch bats and uh, appreciate what they do. Turn off unnecessary lights. Uh, light pollution can disrupt or deter bats and uh, do you really need that outside light when you go to bed? Creating a garden will also help attract insects that help pollinate plants and feed bats, contributing to the circle of life, so that is also a good way. Last but not least, install a bat box. Buy one, make one, providing shelter for bats is a great way to promote a healthy environment. When summer is here and hopefully our bat box will have guests, I will make a new video for you. In order to get the good news, you should subscribe and hit the bell button. And let me know if you make a box too, it will be awesome to see. Until then, start helping the bats by sharing my message and take action. How cool wouldn't it be for the YouTube community to have saved the species?